Hey, how's it going? Bottle episodes are back! Alright, let's get straight into it. I really wanted to get this one out before Ferdu, but you know, everything that happened, so uh, here it is now. So this episode is all about how to be an amazing fursuit handler. Now, you've probably heard the term fursuit handler get thrown around a lot. Uh, I also hear spotter, uh, minder, looker after, -er, just anything that implies that you are going to be watching a fursuiter. But what does it mean? How do you be one? How do you do it well? Well, sit down, shut up, I'm going to tell you how. A fursuit handler is basically someone who is just looking after a fursuit and making sure that they're alright with everything because when you're in a fursuit, all your senses are impaired. I can't hear as much as I normally can, I can't see as much as I normally can, I can't feel as much as I normally can, like, it can be pretty scary. So you often need someone who isn't in a fursuit just to keep an eye on you and make sure that, you know, everything goes okay. But despite that, fursuit handling is a lot more complicated than it may seem. So listen up. Firstly, it is essential, like absolutely 100%ly essential to have a fursuit handler if you're going fursuiting in public. So not a con, not a party or at a friend's place. If you're in a public space with a fursuit, you need at least one handler. I'd say one handler for every three to five fursuiters, depending on how good of a handler they are, but just at least have someone, please. In a convention, you can get away without having a handler. I don't always have a handler at conventions because you've got your headless lounge, you've usually got your room right there, you're surrounded by friends, and you're surrounded by other furries who, you know, know to just keep a general eye out for you. So let's say you're going to a fur meet and someone has come to you and said, hey, I'm going to be fursuiting, can you please be my handler? What does that entail? First, you're gonna need a backpack. Like, either someone else's that they've given you to look after, or your own, but the bigger the better, you need a backpack. The fursuiters you're looking after will usually give you their essential items you just look after while, you know, they don't really have hands. So phone, wallet, keys, all those essential things. Maybe a brush and a badge too. Now, most fursuiters should have brought their own water, which they will also give to you to put in your backpack. But if you wanna be every fursuiter's best friend, Bring water, like uh, sometimes at meets people will bring like the massive like pallets or water bottles and they are very popular <laughs> for that day. But if you're an assigned handler, it's not just about giving them water when they ask for it. You need to watch them and look for the signs that means they need water. Signs like walking really slow, like kind of hunched over a bit, just staggered, not standing very straight, uh, heavy breathing or they just, in general, haven't had a drink for a while. Just go up to them with a drink bottle and be like, hey, do you need some water? Or even just like, show it in their face a little and they'll be like, oh, cool, water. Unless you know your suitor very, very well, don't always trust that they're gonna know when they need water. Cause a lot of suitors don't. Uh, especially in the case of heat stroke, like right before heat stroke really hits, you feel amazing. Like you'll be feeling absolutely terrible and then suddenly it all goes away and you're like, oh, cool, I'm fine. But no, when that happens, that means it's too late and you are about to be quite ill. Learn that the hard way. Alright, then aside from that, you are also on brush duty. Now, first it is again, should have brought their own brush. If you have your own, that's amazing. If you can bring that, everyone's gonna love you. But the first suitors should have brought their own. So when they're walking around and you see something's like a little scruffy or when they're first suiting up and they need a brush, you need to be there and brush them for them. Now, I get so many comments about this, so let me just bring this up now. I get so many people saying that, hey, Bakari, you need to brush this way because when you do that, it doesn't pull out as much fur. Which, yes, that is true. These slicker brushes are designed for pulling loose fur out of pets, but it is personal preference which way you brush. I prefer to brush this way because, yes, I will lose a little bit more fur, but I find it gives a nicer brush and you stay nicely brushed for a bit longer. If you want to be a bit more fur conservative, then yes, do brush upside down. So when you're brushing a fursuiter, make sure you ask which way they prefer to be brushed. All right, so stop telling me I'm wrong. All right, so back to handler stuff. Uh, you are also the fursuiter's eyes. Fursuit vision can be absolutely atrocious. Like cup your eyes around your hands like you're making pretend binoculars and that's the best vision you'll ever get out of a fursuit. It is especially bad for realistic suits because the only vision they usually have is like little, little tear duct vision and that can be like trying to look through a five cent piece. It's very, very hard, so keep an extra eye out for them. But as a general rule, fursuiters don't have peripheral vision or can see below them. 
So if I put my hands up here, I still can't see them. There, I can like just see them there. So anything that is behind my hand, I can't see that. And this suit has very, very good vision. So you're not gonna get any better than this really. And again, for below me, can't see, can't see, can't see. Oh, there we go. I can like just see the tips of my hands there. So anything that's there and below, I have no idea what's going on there. So you need to look out for any hazards that the first shooter can't see. Mainly steps, uh, roots, uh, just anything that they can trip over that they really need to be aware of. Children, you also need to look out for children because, uh, you know, being very short, can't see them. So like so many times I have a kid come up and hug my leg and I'm like, I'm glad you touched me because I was literally about to boot you out of the way because I couldn't see you. So if you see a kid that is outside of a first reader's vision, make sure you let them know either by going up to them uh, and telling them, uh, getting their attention and pointing or just going, there's a kid! You also got to watch out for people that are approaching your first suitor from behind. Approaching a first suitor from behind is one of the most dangerous things you can do to a first suitor because one, they did not see you coming at all. Two, they don't know who's touching them. And three, they've just been touched without any kind of consent. Like, it is a recipe for disaster. So if you see someone coming up to a first suitor from behind, either stop them before they get there, or go and warn your first suitor, go like, hey, there's someone coming up behind you, just keep an eye out. And they'll be like, oh, cool, thank you. I didn't get scared to death, you're amazing. Now, the most important thing that, well, I think it's the most important thing that I also don't see many handlers do is diffuse situations. The thing that separates you from an okay handler to an amazing handler is knowing when to step in and be like, hey, no, you need to move. A lot of things can just look like the first is having fun, but you need to know what is the difference between fun and danger or annoyance. Signs you need to watch out for are excessive nose booping, uh, tail pulling, please tail pulling is a huge one. If you see anyone pull a first suitor's tail without their immediate knowledge, please tell them off. Eye poking, overcrowding, uh, jumping on the first suitor, just think, things like that. If you see a first suitor turn away from a child and try to get away from the situation and the child is still like coming up and poking them and everything, that's when you absolutely do need to step in. Not always children either, adults and stuff do this too, especially drunk adults. If you see any drunk adults, uh, you need to immediately go in the other direction. I made that mistake once and I will never ever do it again. I don't think I realized they were drunk anyway. But they were so friendly and so awesome and I was in full suit. I'm like, yeah, running up to them and hugging them and we had a really good time. Uh, so we were there for about 10 minutes. They were like, yeah, cool, bye, time to move on. So we started walking away. And before I knew it, the guy that I was interacting with had run up to me and jumped on me from behind, bowling me over. I was fine, bar a little dirty, but man, that was absolutely terrifying. That was no fault of the handlers either, because we had already walked away, we had already diffused the situation. That was just a shitty human being. But another example of where a handler should have stepped in, um, on my very, very, very first uh, first outing, we went to a park and there were so many kids, like a ridiculous amount of kids. It was really fun, but they were mobbing me. Like they were jumping on me. They were pulling my tail. They were pushing me over. I was on the ground and people were climbing on top of me and I was going, help, to my handler. And he's like, oh, look, oh, it's so funny. No, I was in so much stress. Like my brand new suit I had just gotten was getting ruined by these kids. And he just kept standing there and filming like, no. I know in other videos and panels about first suit handling, they'll uh, talk about hand signals. So like, I think it's this that means, hey, I need help, please get me out of here. Um, I've never seen anyone actually use hand signals other than I need a drink. But I guess keep an eye out for that as well. That means get me out of here. <laughs> as for other hand signals, uh, that's something your suitor will uh, talk to you about beforehand. Like, I don't expect everyone to know all the first suit handler signals I guess no one really uses them anyway all right moving on next thing you will have to do is talk for your fursuiter most fursuiters will not talk in public so when you get concerned parents and other confused citizens coming up going oh my god what is all this what's happening what's his name you need to be there and you need to be prepared to answer all these questions I highly recommend having like a pre-rehearsed response to what is this what are you because you're gonna get asked that a lot 
So don't mention furries or anything, just say like, hey, we're a bunch of people, we like animals, we have animal costumes, and we just like running around with them for fun. That's all you gotta say. Now, if you have a fursuiter that is misbehaving, uh, your job just got twice as hard. Fursuiters should know what they should and shouldn't be doing, but there is always those few that either don't know or don't care. So stopping them from doing things such as, you know, going into stores and shops, uh, crossing roads without any help, interacting with groups of people who were just minding their own business, any sort of thing that would otherwise put a damper on the fandom's reputation. I see a lot of cases where first it is in a park and there's actually like a wedding photo shoot happening at the park They're like oh my god yes wedding take your photo this will be so funny let's go crash their wedding party N No Don't do that Please unless they've asked you to be in their photos Don't jump in It's very rude it's their very special day they don't want giant random fluffy animals in their wedding photos I see the photos turn up online where there's all these hooters like yeah look at us we're so silly and awesome and then all the normal people in their nice get up are just like we shouldn't have had the wedding on this day. You always have to remember, when you're in public, you represent the entire furry fandom. So, it's the first of responsibility to make sure they don't put a damper on that, but as a handler, you are the last line of defense for when fursuiters are not very good people. So, even if nobody has asked you to be a handler, it's still good to know all this stuff, so you can still keep an eye out for your fellow furries. Especially when it comes to diffusing situations! Now, in terms of conventions, as I said before, first it is generally don't need handlers at conventions, but that's because everyone else usually has some kind of handling know-how and can just look after us anyway if something goes wrong. So that means, you included, now that you've watched this video, you know how to look after first it is so you can look after someone if something goes wrong at a convention. There's not much you really have to do. Just, if you see a fursuit looking unwell or just tired, you know, asking if they're okay can go a very, very, very long way. If they're not okay, take them to the Heather's Lounge, get them to D-Head, give them some water, and just ask if they need anything else and they should be alright. Otherwise, they'll just be like, yep, cool, I'm fine, move on, cool, save the day, nothing happened. If you see a fursuit take off their head, whether it's in a convention space or public, uh, if they don't already have immediate help, go up and ask if they're okay, because that's one of the sure signs that a fursuiter is not okay. Most fursuiters are very dedicated to the magic and they won't remove their heads unless it is in a headless lounge or their room or somewhere private, no matter how dire their situation is. And so annoying because usually people just jump on the, oh my god, you're breaking the magic, oh look at you, you suck so much, they just jump straight to that, not realising that the person you are poking fun at is currently suffering from heat stroke and needs some help. So yeah, asking if someone's okay can really go a long way. Like, I've heard so many horror stories of first hitters on their own at conventions that have had to take off their head and need some serious help only for people to go, oh lol, you're breaking the magic. Like, help your fellow furries. So handlers, always look out for your first hitters. Make sure they're okay. And first hitters, please behave yourselves and make the jobs for the handlers as easy as possible. All right. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. See you around.